All right, good afternoon traders. This is Bruce at Bookmap and uh, welcome to the uh, DX Feed Bookmap webinar here. What we're gonna do is go through uh, uh, DX Feed Bookmap, looking at some US equities, uh, trading them or uh, you know, showing the one-click trading here, uh, but uh, really going over the advantage that you get uh, and uh, you can get it right away here. Uh, you can get it now. Uh, and um, uh, through the data visualization with Bookmap and the data coming from DX Feed. And uh, I'll, I'll jump right in here and, uh, and show you that advantage. Okay, so uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, and uh, let me know if you have any questions here. A little bit about me, uh, my name is Bruce Pringle, a uh, trader for 10 years in a variety of markets here. I'm the order flow specialist here at Bookmap and I lead the trading education, uh, expertise in uh, order flow and market microstructure. Okay, our Twitter handle is bookmap underscore pro. Uh, you can also follow us on YouTube, uh, just search for bookmap and uh, you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to, uh, to mention here Okay, and uh, let me show you this in just a minute here. Uh, we have a, uh, a upcoming webinar series here. Uh, I just wanna make you aware of, and uh, I'm gonna show you here with our, uh, our Twitter uh, account uh, at bookmap underscore pro, okay, here. Uh, and then um, what I wanna show here is just uh, scroll down a little bit and uh, this tweet here. Uh, so all of next week, uh, you're invited here to the um, Pro Trader webinar series. Uh, usually we have uh, two webinars every day uh, at Bookmap, one for the public and then one for subscribers. Okay, and we really go through the detail in uh, uh, the order flow, uh, in the advanced order flow webinar, webinar for our subscribers. We won't have either next week. Instead, we're gonna have professional traders. Um, they will be presenting how they trade and uh, read and uh, integrate order flow within their trading activity. Okay, so for example, on um, Monday here, uh, November 5th, they're all at 11 a.m. except for Thursdays, that's at 12.30, uh, all Eastern time, okay? And we have JTrader here. Okay, you may know who he is. Uh, he has a, a very nice following. Uh, he's an expert trader. He's been trading for like 20 years or so. Uh, and um, uh, he'll be presenting on Monday how he looks at large caps uh, using order flow. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, let me go through the uh, the lineup here, uh, and the, I'll give you the link so that uh, uh, you can uh, you can register. Okay, so J Traders on Monday. Uh, then you can see uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we have we have Walter, Luis, and Niels. Uh, they're all excellent traders here. Uh, professional traders, been trading for quite a while, uh, and using Bookmap for quite a while. Uh, the um, they're all futures traders. Okay, uh, and then Friday though we have Hammer Trader. Okay, now he's another uh, equities trader. Uh, so um, uh, very interesting um, uh, method of trading. He's looking at small caps, okay, dollar stocks, uh, and uh, and from the short side. Okay, so I know J Trader looks at a lot of that as well, but uh, uh, that's what uh, Hammer Trader is going to be covering. Uh, anyway, here, let me give you the link uh, to register. You can click on it here, uh, and it'll take you to the registration page. And I'll just I'm just going to put this into the chat for you. Okay, and then you can register. Okay, there you go. So uh, you can click on that link and uh, register on this page here. It'll take you to this page. All right. That's that. Uh, let's continue on with the um, presentation here. Okay, pretty bold statement right off the bat. Get a competitive advantage now just by getting the software. How is that possible? Okay, well, I'm going to show you because uh, the... Uh, uh, well, Bookmap software is a, we're able to see all market liquidity and full depth. Okay, that full depth comes from DX Feed. Uh, they're offering that full depth of market uh, visualized uh, in uh, the order book, right? And that's uh, definitely an advantage. Uh, we're able to read uh, in in real time uh, and historical uh, the uh, micro and macro structures, uh, and then uh, the algos and the larger players. Uh, we'll take a look at some examples of some. Um, uh, larger um, or, or some of our bookmap traders if, you, if you'd like to take a look but we're going to jump in and look at some live market analysis and we'll set some orders okay uh, to show you that one click trading so the goal here at the end of the uh, webinar is for you to understand what you're looking at for example in this chart okay and we'll define the elements here uh, and then some of the advantages that you get okay so um, 
uh, before I get into the overview here, let's just uh, step back and take a look at the live market because I want to show you immediately that advantage that I'm talking about here. Okay, I actually have Apple up here and I have the correlation tracker on. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, and uh, we're moving up to the upside here. Actually, we've been bullish all day long uh, in the webinars. Uh, so these uh, these are pullbacks looking for more uh, top side. Uh, anyway, the um, the advantage that you get right away, okay? Well, how is that possible? Okay, well, let me show you. There's actually, uh, uh, the example's not so good here in Apple. It's not bad, but it's not so good. Uh, maybe let's look at Tesla. I saw it better here. All right, so here's your advantage right off the bat. Okay, here's our 930 open right here. All of this is pre-market data here. Right, and uh, let me close up some of these uh, sub panels and just make this uh, much easier to read here for just, just a second here, so bear with me. That's a point of control indicator here, that blue line, and this white line here is our VWAP, and we also have iceberg detector on here as well, okay? It's gonna take those off, so we're looking at the basic book map chart here, uh, and here's your advantage, okay? Here's the 930 open right here, right? Uh, in Tesla, 338 uh, or so, somewhere around there. Then a quick move to the downside, okay? Where did it go? Well, look at the heat map here, okay? See these striations in orange? Okay, this is high liquidity. Well, it went right down into it, or just just in front of it here at 335, and the, and the sellers uh, weren't, weren't willing to take it any lower. In fact, we rotate right back up, and where do we go? Okay, right up into 340, into 342, into 345, uh, let's see, this is 345.50 or so. Uh, here's 347, or oh, I'm sorry, that's 346, 347, 348, 349, and 350. Let's see, 350. Uh, there's even more up here at 350, okay? So let's just zoom back a little bit here. At the open, you already knew these players uh, and where, they're, where they want to deal, okay, with high liquidity. Okay, in fact, this one's pretty good right here. Okay, and this one's not bad either at the open. At Before the open, pre-market, you already knew this information. Okay, there's buyers down here. They stayed in the book. Okay, where are the sellers? Well, they, they jumped in here at 340, but this, this happened after uh, the open. Look at pre-market, they're here at three, uh, 342. Okay, it's like a magnet. Okay, I trade right into it. We're bullish for the day anyway uh, from our a, a larger time frame uh, uh, outlook. Uh, looking for larger areas of liquidity to be filled on the way up here. So let's see if we can make it up into this uh, 350 area. Look at, there's um, almost 83,000 shares up here at 350. So we might not make it up there, uh, but um, uh, you can start to understand even before the market opens where larger players are located. Mix this into your analysis, uh, and this is the, the advantage you'll get right away by using Bookmap. Okay. Now, reading this and putting it into context is where we're going to take this further now. Okay. So, anyway, that's the lofty, bold statement, and uh, uh, there it is just to begin with. Uh, and then uh, let's get into more of the advantages here. All right. So, the overview of DXFeed Bookmap. Okay. What is it? Well, Bookmap is a trading platform. Okay. In fact, with DXFeed, uh, you can trade from uh, the chart in Bookmap and uh, into a funded uh, uh, interactive broker's account. Okay, um, we have a unique way of visualizing this data as I just uh, demoed. Okay, and I, don't worry if I, if I lost you on that, um, we'll, we'll go back and we'll define the elements here. Now, DXFeed uh, connects Bookmap to all US equities. Okay, and that's it, no European markets, just US equities. Uh, it also allows you for connectivity to futures and digital currencies. Okay, so uh, in fact, all in the same moment. Uh, in fact, my uh, a book map is connected to the futures markets. Uh, I can connect to multiple brokers or multiple data providers in the futures markets, uh, as well as DXFeed, as well as digital currencies. All right, we'll skip the poll here. Uh, how do you use the dome? Um, and uh, we'll move right into uh, uh, market data here. Okay, so in traditional charts, you're looking at about 10% of the data. Okay, you're looking at executed volume, uh, you're looking at aggregated data within a periodicity. Most of us are looking at candlestick or some sort of bar chart. 
Uh, you might be looking at point and figure chart, could be range, uh, Renko bars, whatever it is. It's still a bar, it's still a periodicity of data. And there's a problem there uh, because that periodicity dilutes the, uh, the data that's within it. Okay, so for example, a five minute candlestick chart, uh, you're only getting open high, low and close of a five minute period. Right, uh, and um, I'll show you the um, uh, in book map how you're looking at all of the data. Okay, and forget about uh, where the volume traded, etc. That's uh, uh, usually in a sub chart, uh, unless you're looking at a footprint chart uh, for your um, your trading. Okay, even then, uh, the way that we display the the volume is, is advantageous because, again, a footprint chart you're looking at aggregated data within a periodicity. Okay, and a lot of the times in traditional charts try to make up for the difference or the or the the lack of insight with indicators, and indicators are actually it just clouds the the um, uh, the whole environment. It makes it even tougher because these are derivatives of time, price, and volume, and uh, those derivatives and studies, you know, they're they're lagging, uh, and um, uh, there, there's some sort of average and. Uh, uh, maybe they're good for pullbacks, uh, but uh, we're, we're trying to figure out where price is going, right? Uh, and um, uh, with Bookmap, you get 100% of that data, okay? Now, you get the executed volume, but you there's no aggregated data here. Uh, it's just the data, uh, the market. But then the, the big distinction here is that full depth of market, okay, both current and historical. And that was that heat map that I was just showing. So let's just go over this pyramid here. Um, from the bottom of the period here, it's based on data, okay? From that data, we start to uh, uh, inform ourselves, okay? We get information, we start to put that uh, information to use, uh, and we, we gain knowledge, okay? And then from the knowledge, uh, over time, we gain wisdom, okay? It all starts with the data, okay, with good data, because else uh, it's garbage in and garbage out. Okay, so, uh, DX feed, okay, it covers all U.S. equities, offers that full depth of market, very low latency. There's servers around the globe uh, so that uh, make sure that you're getting the price uh, quickly. Uh, and um, uh, consolidated uh, views here uh, and just different choices that uh, are allowed. Okay, and I'll go over these later uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation. But you get NASDAQ total view and last sale. Uh, you can also get EdgeX or BATS or CBOE, or you can get both of those together. Okay, with a combo package of NASDAQ and EdgeX, all right? Okay, so let's define some of those elements. So now we're gonna take a, a little step back here. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because um, uh, we've gone through it many times in the past, but uh, uh, still there's there's new traders in here. Uh, you, need to, you need to know what we're, what we're looking at here in Bookmap uh, so that you can extrapolate uh, that information into uh, the Bookmap chart, okay? So this is uh, a regular dome here, okay? Uh, you have the bid on the uh, on the left side, the ask on the right side. Uh, this is the top of the book right here. This is current price, okay? Here's the spread, okay? We're looking at uh, uh, Green Mountain uh, Coffee Roasters here at 24.64 on the bid. Okay? On the ask, we have 24.66. So we have a two point or two cent spread, right? So um, just a pretty typical market here uh, and a very typical uh, looking dome here or level two data, right? Uh, you can see the depth here. You can see the uh, the size uh, that there are, that uh, the traders here on the bid where they, you know, the price they wanna buy, you're actually seeing the market maker or data provider. Uh, and um, uh, their time here, as well as the um, uh, uh, the, the size that they wanna trade, okay? So these, these are limit orders here, okay? Uh, and uh, this is on the ask. This is where they wanna sell, all right? So that's that. And let's compare that to book map. Okay, so top of the book right here, we're looking at uh, uh, you know that uh, that spread. Well, here it is in book map, right? So uh, you see the um, the price ladder here. Now we're not looking at Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. We're looking at Apple instead. Uh, anyway, let's just go over the concepts here. Uh, here's your price ladder, uh, and uh, here's your best bid and offer. And then here it is in the uh, depth of market here, the C COB column. Okay, so we have 600 here on the bid. Okay, um, 600 shares that are available uh, on the offer. It looks like uh, you know, 107 or something like that. All right, so that's that. Um, that's the top of the book in book map right here. Okay, now uh, we're looking at the depth here of um, 
you know, buyers uh, on the bid. Okay, and this is what it looks like, obviously, in the dome, and this is what it looks like in Bookmap. Okay, now we're showing a, a consolidated view here. Okay, so if there's like 18, uh, you know, 100 shares down here, 1,846 shares down here at 172, the figure, um, then uh, you, you know you can see it's broken up here uh, for uh, 2,463. Okay, we're consolidated all at one price level. And then here's your uh, depth on the offer or on the ask up here. Okay. All right. Well, the disadvantages here in the dome. First off, there's no historical view. When these numbers change and these liquidity providers pull or add more liquidity, it's updated. But you don't know what it was before unless you memorize it. Uh, and that's a disadvantage. Okay. The, um, uh, that does not allow you to read uh, algorithmic activity, for example. Uh, it can be hard to even track some of the larger players sometimes. Uh, it's very tedious to read, looking at the numbers uh, all day long. Uh, you definitely do not see microstructure or macro macrostructure. Okay? It's uh, very difficult to, to kind of put that together in your head, uh, where they're bidding, where they're offering, and what that structure might look like. Okay? Like a, a double bottom, for example, or head and shoulders, or whatever it might be. But why those patterns uh, exist is because of the order flow, and we'll get more into it here in just a second. The advantages of book map, it's all graphical, okay? So we have the numeric values here, uh, but uh, in this current market window right here, okay, uh, is the uh, the best bid and offer. This number is the last traded volume. Uh, and then we can see this is the depth here on the on the bid, and this is the depth on the ask. Now, what we've done in book map is we've taken these areas of high liquidity and we've made a graphical representation in the heat map. So look at uh, the heat map here. Uh, at 186.45, we have 3,600 shares. Okay, it's orange. One one uh, tick above or one cent above, we have 2,200 shares. Okay, now it's this kind of pale yellow. Okay, so the scale of this uh, heat map uh, is um, uh, giving us insight or graphical representation to the amount of liquidity. And look at this one up here at 186.50. It's, it's massive, it's completely dominating the book here. We almost have uh, 32,000 shares up here, and it's this dark red color, okay? So that's the scale and the reference here. Uh, and um, uh, now we're starting to understand the book by graphics. Okay, but what we do here is we record that. So when the numbers change, the heat map changes to reflect it, and it's recorded and plotted on the chart historically. So all this heat map is, uh, is where they're bidding and offering. You're seeing the auction historically, okay? So see these striations here in this yellow and, and orange up here? That's the adding and pulling of liquidity, all right? So uh, that's all it is. This vertical white line here separates the current market window here to the right and the historical view to the left. All right, so that's the heat map. Let's go over some of the other chart elements here. Okay, so these uh, these dots here, well, these this is volume that transacted on that best bid and offer. Just lost volume, really? Can everyone hear me? If you could just uh, type yes. It appears that I'm, uh, yeah, okay. Hmm, uh, Mel, it looks like, uh, okay, okay, yeah, all right. So uh, you can hear me now. Okay, good. All right, thanks guys. Um, all right, so um, so there basically there's just three elements on this book map chart, right? And th let's cover them. So um, best bid and offer we've been going over. Okay, now that's uh, the historical view of it here, right? It's just best bid and offer. These dots are transactions that took place on that best bid and offer. So the red bubble here, this is the aggressive seller. They hit the market sell button, crossed the spread, and took liquidity off of the best bid. And that's just how the market works. Uh, the green dot is the aggressive buyer, and they crossed the spread. They paid up for it, hit the market buy button, and they took liquidity off of the best offer. All right, so that's it. Those are those three elements. Uh, and uh, now, though, uh, because of the way that uh, we're not aggregating data uh, in a period going back and forth, we're showing all the, we can see all the microstructure here. Okay. So what do I mean by microstructure? Well, look at this area, whoops, sorry. Look at this area here of consolidation, and then it breaks, 
sellers hit the bid here and they, they drive price lower. We go sideways for a bit here. Uh, and look at look what happened here in the auction. Okay, we're starting to really get context here of what's going on in this market. Okay, we dropped. We're going sideways. They, they start to lower the offer here. They want to be sellers down at lower areas. There's more supply at a lower area. This is bearish. Okay. There's also buyers here though too. So we're kind of like going in a, in a very narrow range. But what happens here? The sellers took on these, uh, uh, they took the liquidity from these uh, uh, buyers here. Uh, and they actually traded through it. Okay. Uh, and uh, we come back up and we come back up kind of where we drop from here a little bit higher. Uh, and then we drop again. Okay, into high liquidity here. Okay, in this time frame here, which you know, it's it's not very much time. Uh, we're in a downtrend. Okay, but we're reading microstructure, and we know that the sellers are in control. Look at the clusters of selling in these areas here, trading through these areas. Uh, the you know the offer is lowering here as well, and the sellers are trading into these areas and through. Okay, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it in the uh, transactions. Okay, so in this time frame, we're going lower. Uh, and uh, but we're going to look at the same chart here, and this is Apple, okay? and then here's that same chart just a little bit later. Okay, but we're zoomed out, and we have the whole the whole day in front of us here, okay? from the 9:30 cash open. This little action right in here is what we were just looking at. Right uh, here's that high liquidity up here at 186.50. Okay, those 32 or thousand shares or whatever it was. Um, that's uh, that's up here. Okay, and here's that move to the downside. Okay, so what we saw was a trend in the, in to the downside in that time frame, but the overall here uh, we're we're looking at a, a trend to the upside. Okay, but what I'm, my my point is here is in this microstructure we're reading it correctly <clears throat> on this time frame. In the macro view we're also looking at it and gaining lots of insight because now we can use this depth of market in this dome here on much higher time frames. This would be impossible to do before. Uh, you can see where they're where they're bidding and offering. Okay, so I'm looking for a, a retest for these guys to come up here and test into this uh, 186.50. Actually, okay, I'd like to see them uh, charge. They're, they're charging up into this uh, uh, 86.40 area here, uh, but uh, looking for the uh, large liquidity here up here to trade. Okay, so anyway. Uh, let's get into some of the details here. <laughs> the main point is you can use your dome on much higher time frames. And the advantage with it that DX feed offers you is all of these levels here, all of them are live. Okay. So when you'll see it, I'll show you in the live market here, you'll be several dollars away, 10, $20 away. And the, these areas will still be live. You'll see, you'll see liquidity change. Okay. So we really know where they're bidding and offering. Uh, and uh, that's an advantage. Okay, so let's go through some of the, um, maybe some of the patterns here and looking at the microstructure, uh, macro structure, macro view, uh, and um, starting to understand like how patterns start to evolve and what's going on in the order flow, okay? And uh, it's truly what makes up the patterns, okay? Is the, is the orders and the transactions. Uh, so uh, we're looking at uh, Disney here, we're moving down. Uh, into high liquidity here, the buyers, uh, they stay in the book, sellers take them on, they trade through it, and this is bearish, right? Uh, but uh, look at this little area down here, we don't see a lot of transactions, okay? They're not able to take it further. Okay, we rotate back up and uh, we come back up and test like kind of high here, so, you know, it's not it's not so strong. Uh, buyers met sellers right here, okay? So this move to the downside is not so strong, there's no follow through. Okay, and we come back down, and again, these guys are willing to buy yet again. They're back in the book at the same price level at 101, and they transact. Look at the selling now. Okay, it, it does trade through that area, okay, but not much, okay, and there's not a lot of sellers. So this starts to look, uh, it's not full absorption, but it's, it's partial absorption, uh, and uh, takes away most of those sellers, okay? There's no more sellers left. And buyers read that and they'll come back in and look at the buyers starting to pick up right here above this little microstructure. You'll see these kinds of move, moves again and again and again. This is just really what, what happens here. Buyers take control, okay? I'm looking for the first test would be the swing high up here. Okay? We come up and we test it. And we get a pretty deep pullback here, okay, where these buyers initiated. 
right? But we come right back up into here, and what do we find up here? More buyers, okay? More buyers at higher highs, right? We break this little structure. And it's not so little either, but, uh, uh, you know, that's a half hour of data, okay? We know the buyers are in control. We're looking for higher highs, okay? We're looking for the next area to test, and that would be up here, but they're pulling. They're pulling their liquidity. And uh, we go sideways here for a bit, and the buyers finally get the idea. You know, we, they know they've got it in control here. We're looking for the target here of 102. Uh, and look at the volume. Look at the volume bars down here pick up. Look at the volume dots and the color of those dots up in here. Buyers. Okay. What's the reaction? Well, we go higher. Okay. And uh, exponentially, basically. Uh, this area was hit and uh, did trade and it traded through it. Uh, but uh, anyway, see how we can start to read and target and start to understand where we're going to go based on the liquidity in the book. That's why it's important to see these levels up here and know that they're live, okay? Uh, that they have the intent to trade, all right? So anyway, uh, now let's take a look at kind of a pattern here, all right? And how this kind of unfolded and why. Well, shoulder, head, shoulder, right? It's basically absorption uh, and based on the, the order book here. Uh, these guys staying in the book and transacting and uh, partially absorbing or absorbing a lot of that selling pressure. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Okay? And, and they're right back in, willing to take more. And they also come back in here again, but, um, you know, price is already gone. Anyway, uh, starting to put those pieces together. Okay, let's start to look at context, too, okay, of li liquidity uh, as, uh, you know, support and resistance and, uh, and trending environments. And now we're looking at uh, Facebook here. Uh, and uh, we can see the um, uh, open again here, move into high liquidity, it transacts, completely absorbed up here. Okay, we do not go through it as we come back down. But, uh, you know, we, we haven't uh, found sellers down here enough. We start to rotate back up and we find buyers. And now there's no liquidity here. The liquidity is up here. So we come up and, and trade our test up into that area here. Just shy of it, here we get our deep pullback and then finally we test through it. Now, those areas of high liquidity here and here and here, uh, you can see how these are acting as a, a, a resistance or uh, definitely as um, uh, we, we know that, uh, uh, you know, they're staying in the book here. Uh, and uh, this is supply, okay? so. Uh, what about uh, the opposite of that? Where, where, what about uh, demand and, uh, and support? Well, interestingly enough, you can see these kind of traces here where the um, supply has turned into demand on the same price level, okay? Same here as we trade through it here, okay? So look at the striations uh, and it lines up pretty nicely. You'll, you'll see it. It's not, it's actually, to be honest, it's not the best example. Uh, there are many others out there. You'll see it all the time. Right, target is going to be this 183, right? Ultimately, and that did trade. Okay, very very high liquidity, 68,000 shares up there. Okay, here's a, here's another in Facebook. I think this is the same chart. Yeah, 183. Uh, this is just uh, later in the day here, uh, and uh, that 183. How many do we say up here? 68,000. Okay, well. 52,000, it, it came down to 52,000, uh, so they did pull some of it, uh, and um, uh, but look at the transaction into it, okay, completely absorbed, right? We did not go through it. In fact, you can still see they're in the book still here with high liquidity, right? So this is absorption. This is what it looks like visually, okay? We can really understand it. Look at the volume spike, okay? And you would think, a breakout, big volume like this, you would think that's bullish. You know, I should be getting in long side, but now you have the liquidity heat map and you can really understand what's going on here. All right, so where do we rotate back down? To areas of liquidity. Again, down here, 182.60 and 182.50. All right, All right. another uh, great example of absorption here in Apple. Uh, 327,000 shares, we trade into it, and they keep trading and trading and trading into it here. This is where you're gonna note your cumulative volume delta, just pick up <clears throat> completely, uh, and um, uh, spike to the high side, but price is not spiking, because it's being absorbed. 
uh, is all this all this buying pressure is being completely absorbed here, and they're still in the book even after at 190. Okay, what was the reaction? Well, we 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 absorbed all the buying pressure. We instead we start to find some sellers, okay, and come back down into other lower areas here. Okay, now I'll go over exhaustion here, and then uh, maybe we'll jump into the live market and start to look at it. Um, and um, uh, let's take a look here at uh, uh, what I mean by exhaustion. It's the opposite of absorption, basically. It just means that there's a lack of trading, a lack of interest of trading uh, at those areas. Okay, so um, uh, absorb or uh, exhaustion, uh, you do not see high liquidity, you do not see transactions. Okay, you don't see any action. It's these little like little tips down here, and see how this is the best bid. And there's very little activity, if any, okay, none basically. Okay, well, the market, if the market can't trade there, it's got to rotate into an area where it can trade. Okay, so it rotates back up into you know your your mean reversion. This is exactly your mean reversion. Okay, it exhausts out. Uh, we're looking for it to trade back into another area. Okay, now in a trending environment, you're looking for it to exhaust out and not only trade back into an area where it can trade and transact, but you're looking for, in this case, buyers to take it higher, okay? And you get price discovery to the upside, right? So uh, anyway, uh, it's not not the greatest, this is not the greatest example of a trend, uh, but, uh, you know, good example of exhaustion at these points here, okay? A trend is actually down here, okay? And I know this is not the, the greatest trend either, but um, you'll see it, like, you'll see several days that are just, just like this. Look at the volume at higher highs. More buying, more buying, more buying. Okay, look at the higher lows. Exhaustion. Very, very typical in order flow in a trend. Okay, there's no one willing to trade here. It can trade back up into here. Your high volume nodes. Right? So anyway, uh, that's how liquidity can act within a trend, and majority of the time that's how you'll see it. Uh, let's go over some of the algo activity, uh, and then we can jump into the live market. All right, so we're looking at uh, Amazon here, 1600 the figure, uh, and um, Ignition Algo, okay? You can start, because we can read the order book and record it, you can read the algos, okay? And, and the, the time frame's not, you know, we're not looking at sub-seconds here. You know, we're looking at uh, 30 seconds of data between each vertical dotted line here, 30 seconds, you know? And the algo that we're reading here has taken place over, uh, let's see, uh, here's 21, here's 17, so like four or five minutes here, right? Uh, and uh, the, out, the, the activity here, uh, you know, that, that happened pretty quickly, but it's all recorded here, and we know the activity, okay? This is one individual actor with high liquidity on the bid, uh, and uh, look at them chase after price here, okay? To me, this looks like uh, 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 ignition algo trying to get price up into this area up here at 1600 and and uh, and above okay and maybe knock anyone out who's um, uh, short uh, and get them uh, going the wrong way here okay so let's just cover it here what's going on right so uh, first off uh, I know this can look rather foreign to you so uh, this is because uh, we're looking at you know sixteen hundred dollars uh, share here um, this uh, is the spread. Here's the best offer, this red line. Here's the best bid is the green line. Okay, the, the green, uh, you know, dots, well, those are the buy transactions, okay, the market buy orders. Okay, the red here uh, is the market sell. Look at where the sell, look at how much selling is taking place on the uh, on the best bid. Very, very little, right? We don't see a lot of red dots. There's some in the midpoints here. Uh, but um, uh, for the most part, buyers are totally in control here. More buying, more buying, more buying, more buying, okay? Now just to make sure, we have this uh, ignition algo here uh, showing very high demand. They they pull it, add it higher, pull it, add it higher several times here. This activity here, it's got to be the same player. Okay? To me, it looks like they're trying to show a lot of demand. We've, they've already got it going their way uh, to try to get it up into 1600 or above. Okay, above 1600 basically, uh, and start to ignite uh, uh, orders. Okay, so we can start to even uh, look at here uh, a possible disruptive and prohibitive practice. Okay, this is not legal. 
Uh, and um, uh, I wouldn't uh, jump to conclusions and say this activity here is specifically illegal, uh, but you can see it, right? Uh, and um, uh, basically, they're not taking any risk by uh, skewing the order book here. So if you show up at an auction for, let's say, apples, and you and you just you you have a pile of cash, and you say like, well, you know what? I it's a it's a a dollar a pound. Well, I'll pay two dollars a pound. I'll pay five. I'll pay ten dollars a pound. Okay, that's what this is doing here. But they haven't made a transaction yet, right? They're just kind of like pumping it up in a sense. All right. Anyway, uh, that's the ignition algo. We can start to read that behavior here. Uh, here's another um, a skew in the book here with algo activity and looking at JP Morgan. So you look at high liquidity up here at um, this 114.50, okay, 29,000 shares. But look at this activity here, this player here, high liquidity on the offer, pulls, adds lower, pulls, adds lower several times. Okay, showing more supply, you know, aggressive supply here. And it, and it has an effect on price. The order book has the orders have an effect on price. It's just how it is. Uh, and um, uh, you can see that uh, price is starting to react to it. All right. Anyway, you can read the behavior. All right. Let's uh, we'll we'll, we'll uh, stay away from the uh, economic release here. Uh, the economic release is is very much like the open here. Uh, this was actually geopolitical. Uh, it was not a scheduled, you know, economic release like at 8.30 a.m. or, you know, uh, whatever, uh, like non-farm is uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, it, we know uh, it's exactly at, uh, uh, you know, 8.15, okay? So um, uh, anyway, that's um, uh, something that you, you'll note in Bookmap, uh, even in geopolitical uh, environments here, see how they're pulling liquidity right at this level here? So you know something's up. You know something's wrong, okay, and this is this was uh, uh, tariff um, uh, news, uh, but with uh, U.S. and China. Okay, and this is for Tesla. Well, it was pretty bullish for Tesla. Okay, we'll look at the action. Same same uh, um, uh, day uh, and time here, and look how look how the uh, market viewed it for uh, Apple. It's fascinating because you know uh, Apple is getting a lot of its components or assembly is in China. Okay. It's hurting Apple here. Okay. Uh, over in Tesla, it's helping them as a U.S. company. Anyway, uh, you can see them pulling liquidity is the big, big, uh, uh, um, you know, thing to show here uh, in these slides. Okay, and then we went over the depth here in the um, uh, at the open. Okay, so let's jump jump into the current market and uh, let me know if there's something you guys want to take a look at. Uh, else, uh, we'll just look at what I have open here. All right, uh, and start to. Uh, uh, read the order flow and, and start to uh, maybe set some orders here as well. Okay, I want to show that one-click trading for you. Netflix, okay. No problem. I got it open. Wow. Well, pretty bullish, pretty bullish. Okay, we were bullish for the day here. Um, so what were we looking at? Um, was it? It was was it Netflix or no? It was Tesla, right? Tesla, we're looking for 350. Yeah, no, I have not gotten there yet. Okay, but uh, wow, Netflix is uh, uh, well. You know, let's let's jump into these areas here and, and let's see. Like, um, you know, did these larger players get filled in these areas? Okay, uh, because we, we're trading, we're zipping right through these areas here. Okay, uh, and let's see where uh, we might be going here. All right. So anyway, it's an incredibly um, Incredibly bullish, uh, and um, uh, moving up up to the upside here. Uh, let's uh, zoom in here, just a second. Okay. Okay. So it looks like these guys got filled down here, no question. Look at this here, beautiful, beautiful pullback right to it, right to where the buyers initiated this move to the upside. Look at the volume here. Okay. See how clear that is, like. They're taking control, right? This is this is a great area here to get back into the trade. Okay, uh, if you got in with a market buy and you're looking for the pop to the upside, take your take some of the profit at, at maybe this area here of liquidity, and okay? maybe even this area here. Whatever the case may be, just re, to reduce some risk, but get right back in here because this is a good setup here 
looking for more buying at higher highs. Okay, and we got it. Anyway, uh, let's zoom into some of these areas and make sure that uh, these guys are staying in the book here and transacting. Yeah, so I'm looking here at a CVP, which means um, chart range volume profile. And the, yep, we can see that uh, we had, uh, uh, well, let's use our data tip tool here. Okay. We had basically about 12,000 shares here. And, and uh, what actually traded was uh, uh, 20, almost 21,000. Okay. We can see that, see this number here, this is an iceberg. Okay, so they're not in the book. So actually, instead of 12, uh, we're actually looking at 17 or so. Okay, because of these 4,500 shares here that are not in the book. Okay, so this is your iceberg. Someone someone was wanted to sell here, a okay, larger player. They did not want to show that liquidity in the book. Okay, because in the book, we're looking at 12, 12 uh, 410. Uh, and then instead we know what traded here. Okay, so a lot more than that. Okay, well, here's part of the reason. Okay, it's an iceberg. Okay, we trade through it, looking for higher highs. Buyers still in control in these areas here. Very little selling down here. Looking for the next level. And rotate back and forth a bit. And okay, it's kind of rare uh, that it will, you know, it pulls back down below that area here to be honest, uh, but uh, it did, and uh, it comes right back up into, though, uh, they rotate right back up into this uh, uh, 312.50, okay, and they're transacting, no question about it. I'm sorry, some of it's pulling here. Um, yeah, some of it's pulling, some of it's transacting. I mean, we know that uh, we see the volume uh, here, uh, but, uh, you know, some of this is pulling here, so we're going to go higher here. All right, we spike through it. They're still here. They're, they're back in, right? And they never really, they never really transact. They're, this is just kind of a bunch of BS here. Uh, and then uh, looking for, um, looking for it to, it to come up into this higher, higher highs here. Yeah, it, it's still pulling back deeply here. I'm looking for it. Um, you know, that other example I showed you were those striations. Yeah, I'm looking for it to trade through, and I'm looking for it to be what was resistance becomes support. Okay, but it's taking its sweet time here, uh, and uh, definitely coming back. And it came all the way back again and tested this uh, 312 here. But there's very little selling down here, and the buying picks up again. We can get more, a little more buying up here. We're coming up into uh, 13, and then you see the, the nice breakout here, uh, all the way up into 1450. Okay, and we should be getting to a current market here pretty soon. Continued on up. Wow, nice, very, very nice move here. Yeah, here's more of what I'm talking about. Uh, hold on just a moment. All right, so nice move uh, continues to go higher here. Uh, then uh, I take a look at uh, this area here. So, you know, this is where we broke out from. We kind of went sideways here and broke out from. So looking for that pullback here uh, into that area, and let's see if those buyers support it. No, no, they did not. Like uh, we, we went down below it here. Uh, now it's kind of going back and forth, I would say. Uh, this, is, uh, this is really starting to get a little more convoluted now. Uh, and uh, maybe sellers can come down and test now, see how they're in the book here at uh, 315, okay? So what, what we just witnessed here, that's why I wanted to zoom into these areas and check it out, is, uh, you know, this little critical area, critical area right here uh, uh, at this um, uh, 317, okay? This is where we broke from. We see a lot of volume up here, and I, I wanted to zoom in here and see if these guys were getting filled or not. Okay, and uh, they um, uh, they were uh, they're, you know they're staying in the book and they're 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 getting filled here, right? So at a certain point, like up here at 18.50, uh, we don't even really trade into that area here. We're finding some sellers here. Sellers are taking control, and they took control below here where they originally bought. That's why I'm looking for 3.15 to trade. Okay, and we're, we're just about to hit it, right? So anyway. Uh, there, there's the uh, reversal that we're looking for, okay? Now, 
this is very typical. You know, you start to look at some of these patterns that exist, like shoulder, head, shoulder. Okay, you can even zoom into this area up here and see a shoulder, head, shoulder within the bigger head and shoulders. Okay, shoulder, head, and then shoulder. Okay, okay and look at look at how the sellers pick it up down here. Okay, they're starting to, they're trying here. Okay? I'm not getting anything from the volume up in this area here, to be honest. I don't see uh, one side or the other taking control, but down here I'm starting to see the sellers take control. Okay. Can you see that? Can you see the red? Can you see them targeting this high, higher liquidity here? Look at the offer too. Look at them lower the offer here. Okay. So putting those pieces in this target, or um, I'm sorry, this context together. Okay. So uh, that's why we, you know, this is the kind of process we go through in the advanced order flow webinars. Okay, just shy of 315. I'm surprised we didn't trade there. Okay, so look at the, some skews and look at the skew in the book here at 316. Look at that, you know, almost 6,000 shares right underneath. And now let's see if the sellers take them on. Looks like they did. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if, if that's the case then. Let's see if the sellers can. Uh, and let's see if we, uh, maybe we can set some orders here. Okay, ah, it's too late. Too late. I, I wanted to get in here uh, with this selling here, uh, and then I'm looking for 315 to trade. Okay. So anyway, sellers. Uh, and, and and why did I think that? Right. This is where this is really where right here is where three um, 31590 is where I'd love to be in right here. Right. Why? Because we can go over it right here. They took them on. Okay. Uh, and uh, and they traded uh, uh, into that and through it. What we need to see is there's more selling after that area, and there is. I'm looking for this uh, 315 to trade. Okay. Uh, cluster of buying still just in front. There's so there's still buying down here, right? So we got a battle going on, right? And, and it's just in front of this high liquidity. Okay. So it's kind of convoluting that there. There we go. There's our 315. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't so clear here at, at that moment. And then the sellers just, just picked it up really, uh, uh, just jumped in here uh, uh, very, very strongly. Uh, this, these are hard moves to see. Uh, we don't know when that's going to happen, okay? Anyway, I know we're looking, we're zooming in and out here quite a bit, but we're going through it in, in real time. So this, this is, you know, uh, what we've got to do. It's the same thing though that we're looking at here. We're looking at, we can look at much higher time frames and start to uh, uh, use the same process to uh, look for um, the, uh, uh, see now, now I like the buyers starting to take control here. So let's see if we can, uh, we can jump in here, maybe set some orders. Okay. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll set a bracketed, ooh. No, I won't set a bracketed order. Um, so I gotta put in like $10 worth or something, uh, or, or more than that. Um, anyway, uh, let's set 100 lot here, or 100 uh, shares. Okay, on a pullback. Okay, I'm filled. All right. Okay, so I'm looking for buyers here uh, to start to step it up again. Okay, looking for this as being support. And I, I saw these clusters of buying coming in here, so I liked it. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm looking to see if we can get back up to uh, uh, 1620 here. Okay, let's close our cumulative volume delta. All right, well, let's, let's set some uh, stops and uh, targets as well. So uh, we can set some OCO orders here. So um, above current price, I want to be, uh, I want to get out. Actually, right here, uh, this is where I'd like to get out. Right at 316, right in front of 316. Okay. And then uh, I'll set my uh, stop loss down here around um, uh, 314.50. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so we lost our support here though. They did pull, uh, as you can see, but uh, we're still finding a few buyers. They're starting to come in now. Okay, here they are. They're back now. Okay, that's bullish. As long as they stay in the book. Okay, it's kind of a range-bound environment here. You know, not, not really looking for much. So that's why I'm looking for just uh, uh, back into where they were selling up here. So I know it's not much of a move, but uh, you can look, you'll see this on a monthly chart. It's the same thing. All right, I'm going to move my stop up. Okay, reduce my risk. There we go. And let's see if we can get filled here. Oh, come on, guys. You know you can do it. All right, some sellers are starting to come in here. I think I'm just going to move this in and take it before this slips away. Okay, there I'm filled. All right, so there we go. Um, so um, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's only 100 shares, uh, but uh, just wanted to show that example here. Now, what I really want to show though uh, is, you know, what we were reading here, and we had our our, our reasons to get involved in what we were looking for. Okay. Now, if we get more vol vol volume here on that buy side, and they they bump up the uh, uh, bid uh, with higher liquidity, and they also start to pull here at three um, sixteen twenty, well, then I'm looking for seventeen. Okay, uh, and they may, but for this little trade here, this is what I was looking for, right? Uh, and that was it. Uh, and um, but what I want to cover here is this one click trading because uh, this this has helped me quite a bit. Uh, I think it could probably help you too. Uh, that is, see how all my decisions are recorded. Okay, so I jumped in here with a market buy. Okay, and then I set my um, stop and uh, take profit uh, here with an OCO order. Okay, so as soon as this was, as soon as I was filled here, it it canceled my other order on the other side. Okay, so anyway. Uh, see how the, see how the volume starting to pick up here. Let's see if they can get it into 317 now. Anyway, that's the uh, the one click trading, and um, uh, this is a great way for, like I said, debriefing your trading and uh, your um, uh, your decision making. Okay, why did I do what I did? For example, why did I I chased it a little bit here? You know. Uh, I saw it come right up to my area here, and it was just not getting filled. And then I started to see some sellers come in. I saw a little bit of exhaustion here, so I'm, I, I, I lowered it uh, a little bit here, okay? And uh, I ended up getting uh, taken out. Now, it ended up going my direction here. I was not willing uh, to, to, you know, have it come back and hit me a break even here, though, right? So, uh, you know, you hear those... Uh, 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 sayings about uh, not giving up a tick. Um, so uh, that's that's exactly what I was kind of thinking there. Anyway, that was my decision-making process, and there it is, all right? Uh, so that's uh, the one-click trading uh, with um, Netflix, and uh, not not bad. I mean, look, we came up into 316.20, and um, now, you know, we're going sideways again. This is, this is what we're looking for. Uh, anyway, uh, all right, let me show you where you can get a uh, book map if you want to give it a try. And uh, I, want, I want to go over the uh, uh, some of the pricing details uh, so that you guys are clear on that. And let me, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, here we go. Okay, so scroll. Let's scroll down here. I'll put this link in the um, in here for you. Okay, so you can click on this link here. It'll take you to this page. And I also want to show you again. 
don't forget to sign up for the uh, Pro Trader event. Okay, so uh, DX feed um, uh, book map, you, you've got the link there. Uh, so scroll down a little bit here, uh, and, or just go to pricing if you want right here. Uh, so this is what you need to do uh, in order to uh, to get book map. First, you need to subscribe to book map. And there's two different versions available, global and global plus. Okay, the global plus is the one that has the add-on indicators like that iceberg detector that I was showing you. And in fact, that gave us some good insight. You know, we saw that uh, that one area that was uh, 12,000 shares that uh, transacted, but the, or I'm sorry, 12,000 shares were in the book, but 20,000 transacted. Well, we saw about 5,000 or 4,500 of them were an iceberg. Okay, they just weren't in the book, right? So it gives great insight uh, to work larger players in the, in some of those areas. Uh, and um, uh, that's the Global Plus version, okay? So step one is you need to subscribe to Bookmap, either Global or Global Plus. Okay, here's the pricing here. Uh, and then next what you need to do is you need to subscribe to DX Feed. Okay, you can get NASDAQ Depth here for $69 a month, uh, or you can get EdgeX here uh, for $59 a month. Okay, these are the data providers uh, in, uh, uh, you know, the U.S. equities markets. Okay, so um, I would recommend getting both, uh, the premium bundle here. The, the more um, uh, data that you can get, the better here. Okay, the more depth um, uh, data that you can get. Okay, so get them both together, uh, and that's 119 a month. Now, uh, there's a special here. You get it for $59 for the first month, and it's 119 afterwards. All right, so step one, subscribe to either bookmap version here, and then step two, uh, choose the depth uh, data that you want from DX feed, uh, and that's it. So just click on this button here. All right, that said, uh, don't forget about the uh, Pro Trader webinar series here. It uh, starts all next week, and uh, here's the link for that as well. There you go. Uh, and uh, we'll wrap it up here, all right? Let's just take one last look at Netflix and see what's going on, okay? Well, went sideways, and then now we're seeing that, see how the buyers are taking control here? So let's see, we're looking, our, our next level was uh, 17, 317, right? Uh, if we could get through 320. Well, what happened at 320? They, uh, I'm sorry, at um, 316.20, what happened there? Well, they pulled. They pulled their liquidity. Okay? The buyers have a clean shot up into 17 if they want to take it. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's all I got for you. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, everyone have a good day, and we'll catch up with you another time. Okay, thanks. <laughs>